What happens if all those economic difficulties come to pass, which seems reasonable to me, if the British people then elect a government that wants to reverse all this? Can that actually occur? Thank you. Um, it, it would depend on the moment, I suppose. Uh, I mean, there is a, a debate in, in, in legal circles in Brussels as to whether once you've introduced the request under Article 50, you can simply yourself unilaterally, the country which introduced that request can unilaterally withdraw it without everybody else agreeing. My guess is, whatever the legal niceties, if a country which initially said we'd like to withdraw turned around and said we've changed our mind and now we'd like to say, before you have finalized the exit, I, I guess people would be willing to have that conversation. They wouldn't be very happy, but they'd probably be willing to have the conversation. If you do it after the exit, well then I'm afraid I don't think you can just reverse it. Then you have to reapply or you have to uh, sort of uh, start the process of, of joining the EU probably, probably again. So it would depend on the time frame. But I mean, I just want to be clear, nobody in Brussels is expecting any uh, rapid change of direction and we are working on the assumption that the Article 29, uh, the Article 50 notification on the 29th of March is the definitive position of the UK and that that is the direction in, in which we are heading. Other comments, Desmond? Yeah. I guess uh, I grew up in the colonies in a place called South Africa and they used to say in South Africa that uh, Britannia doesn't rule the waves, uh, it rather waves the rules. So, you know, hopefully Britain is hoping that the same would be said of the Europeans when it comes to they wanting to change their mind on Article 50. Other questions? Way in the back here, and then I'll come to you. Uh, thank you very much for a very interesting panel. Uh, my name is Richard Sassoon, retired uh, federal sector. Uh, my question is, I understand, well, I understand the idea behind uh, the Brexit, i.e. the people of Britain feeling that they were, um, that their autonomy was being um, undermined uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a people, as a nation, as a culture. My question is perhaps for Mr. O'Sullivan, Ambassador O'Sullivan, what do you see as um, a possible remedy for that sense of alienation that could be felt in other places. And this is perhaps more of a cultural as opposed to an economic question, but the sense of alienation that the British people had, is that something that could spread, perhaps for economic or other reasons? And if so, what administratively or what, what, could, the, uh, what could the EU do to um, alleviate that? Thank you. Um, I'll try to give you a short answer, it's not easy, uh, because I, I, I do think, uh, if we were discussing the future of the European Union, that one of the issues is a certain disconnect between what happens in Brussels and what's perceived and felt by, by many of our citizens. There, there are contradictions there. If you look at the latest opinion polls, you will find that opinion in favour of the European Union in, in 27 member states has increased considerably and is still running you know very positive levels in some countries 60 70 80 percent of and and that coexists sometimes with people thinking they don't like what's going on in brussels uh, so i mean we have to but we have to deal with that i think the biggest problem we have to be very frank is what i call the the nationalization of success and the europeanization of failure the tendency of national politicians when they come back from brussels if it, if, it, if a good decision has been taken they say you're so lucky i was there because you know they nearly decided a bad thing but i was there and i got the best deal for you and it's a great decision and we love it if a tough decision has to be taken even if it's a decision that everyone agrees has to be taken in the collective best interest ministers will come back and say you're not going to believe it what they decided in brussels i tried my best but i was outvoted i couldn't do anything about it and we're going to have to live with this terrible decision. People are not stupid. You do that six days a week and you tell them that bad things come from Brussels and good things come from national politicians. You ask them on the seventh day, as Romano Prodi, my former boss, is president of the commission, you ask them on the seventh day to vote for Europe, they might be tempted to vote no. So I think we have a problem of the honesty of the debate in, at the national level about why we do certain things at European Union level and why it gives better outcomes than if we try to do it alone. And I do think that will be part of the, the challenge for the EU27 going forward, and I think there will be a new dynamism in trying to 
better invent the connection between uh, what happens in Brussels and what happens elsewhere. But I just advise you, I sometimes say here, uh, Brussels is held in the same respect in the rest of Europe, but Washington sometimes is held in the rest of the United States. It is a problem of any federal structure uh, because there is a sense of distance and communicating that and getting people to buy into the benefits of having uh, continent-wide rules as opposed to deciding everything at the local or, or state level is not always easy. And we, we, we face that challenge and we will face it every day. I, Other comments? I, yeah. I, I have a little bit of a political science background, so forgive me if I raise a different tack, which is referendum democracy is not the only way to do democracy. There's a reason why the U.S. was a republic. There's a reason why in Britain, even though they've chosen to ignore it now, Parliament is sovereign, not the popular vote. The popular vote is binding in the political sense, but is in no sense legally or constitutionally binding in, Europe, in the UK. So putting it differently, a poll just came out in the German press that a third of Bavarians would like to secede from Germany. I think it came out yesterday in Die Zeit. No, in, in Die Welt. Um, you know, at, 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 you don't want elected officials or the appointees of elected officials completely ignoring popular opinion, but there's a reason why constitutions get drawn up with less degrees of responsiveness to popular opinion. 